Skeptics. The World Skeptics Congress, Paranormal, Supernatural, Fringe Science, Pseudoscience and How It Really Is. Berlin welcomes you. And now it's my pleasure to announce the next speaker is Dr. Benedict Matanar. Dr. Matanar is an anesthesiologist uh, who has uh, specialized in, and has practiced in let's say pain clinics, palliative care, and what makes him special, he has a, a diploma in acupuncture, and not just any diploma in acupuncture, it is a, a category B diploma, which should be the highest level in acupuncture, very close to, let's say, a black belt in uh, karate. <laughs> Please, Dr. Matanar. Ladies and gentlemen, first I want to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak at the World Skeptics Conference. It's an honor for me, and I hope to meet your expectations. A friend of mine suggested the title for this presentation, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. I have yet failed uh, to ask him whether he was thinking of the film featuring Clint Eastwood, which I never saw, or if he was inspired by the following slide describing the quality of acupuncture needles. <laughs> I have always bought the cheapest, not knowing if they were good, bad, or ugly. Guess what? They have worked fine. Have they? Or what else has done the job? This is one focus of my lecture. What happens, what can happen, if you stick a needle into your human body? I want to take a closer look on the good, the bad, and the ugly things that I connect with acupuncture. I will not discuss studies, reviews, and meta-analyses. Edward Ernst does it. Um, up to now, no one managed to give proof on the existence of uh, all the details you have to believe in when acting as acupuncturist. So, what do you have to believe in when applying acupuncture? You have to believe in the life power chi, which is flowing on meridians, on defin um, definite lines on your body with specific points on it. And you have to believe in that illness is caused by disharmony of this chi flow. And you have to believe that sticking needles into specific points can harmonize the chi and regain health. And this is absolutely ridiculous. But what about the good ones of acupuncture? Most of the studies published and thousands of undoubtable case reports of alleviation uh, of symptoms after acupuncture refer to pain. Without these reports, I wonder if acupuncture um, would have become this popular. For what reason acupuncture is often successful in pain therapy? To understand the popularity of acupuncture in Europe, we have to take a closer look on the pain system which protects our body and the ones of about 5,000 mammalian species on Earth. Initially, I worked as an anesthesiologist and um, subsequently I specialized in pain therapy. And with time, palliative care became more and more important and today it's the main focus of my work. But I also treat non-cancer related pain and especially in this general field, acupuncture is highly rated. It is almost, it almost has become indispensable. In the course of my medical formation, I have become socialized regarding the effectiveness of acupuncture as a very unique and specific one. And one, is, uh, one which is best to be studied in China in order to use it in the most responsible and effective way on patients. And I've had no reason to doubt the special effects. After having met the skeptics, I started to question um, the meridians, the life force, chi, its flow, and the special points. And once you start asking serious questions um, regarding acupuncture, after having paid about approximately 5,000 euros for getting the B diploma, including 350 hours of training on the weekend, um, which is one of the highest qualifications in acupuncture in Europe, uh, in Germany, if you do so, you run into a problem. And so did I. But let me take you on a brief journey across pain and its characteristics. 
In this work, De Omni, the French philosopher René Descartes proposed one of the earliest concepts of modern physiology. Uh, he compared the pain stimulus and its pathway to the brain with a string and a bell. Pulling at one end of the rope instantly strikes a bell which hangs at the other end. This early concept of pain transmission formed the basis of further modifications of pain theory in the 19th century. And here we are, 450 years later. Uh, we know um, um, many more details. We know about nociceptors which detect the pain stimulus and the sensation of uh, pain then travels to the spinal cord. And um, the spinal cord is responsible for the reflex to back off a hot plate uh, you accidentally, uh, accidentally touched. You don't have to think about it. Your body just reacts quickly to prevent serious injury caused by the heat. Later, the brain gets the information about the stimulus. And this leads us to the assumption, no brain, no pain. Brain-dead individuals, when having their organs removed for organ donation, only need medication to relax the muscles for the explantation, to suppress, reflex, to suppress reflexes, which could make it different to remove the organs carefully. They don't need any pain medication because no brain, no pain. And these are the instruments widely used to evaluate the intensity of pain. Across put um, at the upper left of this rating scale means no pain, uh, the upper right corner illustrates the strongest pain. And now, let's think of various factors which may influence your judgment. You may be asked in different ways, you may be asked by different people, um, in different situations, and most important, in different moods. For example, imagine you hit your finger with a hammer. Imagine you are on the way to your dentist expecting 30 minutes of treatment. Alternatively, imagine you are on your way to the airport and your plane um, is about to leave for Florida uh, in one hour for a two weeks holiday. And now decide where you would put the X on the above scale. Um, uh, my guess is the first situation, you put the X on the right hand whereas in the second situation, you would put it on the left. Accordingly, we can deduce that the same pain stimulus may provoke very different reactions. Therefore, I believe, mostly except for cancer pain, pain is always unique. One moment it's moderate, the other moment it's severe. This person celebrates Eid Milat Unabi. It's a kind of Muslim bank holiday where people hurt themselves to praise the birth of Muhammad. What do you think? Where would he put his cross? Here or there? It's the same procedure. <laughs> so pain is a very personal experience. In comparison, it's like listening to an orchestra. You don't hear every single instrument, but you have an impression. And mostly, um, the impression is bad. When talking about pain, the placebo effect is extremely relevant. And most important, um, it's very much affected by the therapist. That's to say, talking to a very friendly, open-minded, empathic and devoted therapist means changing negative connotations on pain. A perfect example, uh, your child suffers from an illness or an injury. What do you do? Um, you hug your child. You blow gently on the hurting limb or sing a song. Uh, it's a well-proven method which, uh, that hopefully everyone in the audience here remembers. But mood and mental condition are not the only factors influencing pain. An injury or a pain stimulus um, in mammalians leads to the release of substances which inhibits the pain as an unpleasant sensation on the brain. These are called endorphins. Endorphins are neurotransmitters which inhibit incoming pain signals. And because of similar effects to endogenous morphine, they are called endorphins. And this system is highly effective and we should be thankful for that. I consider this as one of the clues of acupuncture. 
since sticking needles into the skin can release endorphins, and lots of studies have proven this. However, no study could prove that it is important to target specific locations, meaning the use of specific acupuncture points. The endorphin system is backed up by another inhibitory system, uh, which can be explained um, by the gate control theory. Only a few words about that. The gate control theory was the first modern theory to explain the complexity of pain in humans. It postulates that pain is gated by non-pain stimuli, such as vibration or touching. What do you instinctively do if you hurt your hip? You rub it. And rubbing as a non-pain stimulus can relieve pain by reducing its transmission to the brain. It can close the gate for the pain sickness, and so does acupuncture. For more than 2,000 years, it's well known that electric currents can be used for pain treatment. In this case, an electrogenic fish is used to treat a person's headache. The fish was placed on the painful spot until the pain ceased. According to the gate control theory, it worked by overflowing the gate with non-pain stimuli like electric currents. And because there is enough inert electrogenic fish for all patients, uh, TENS was invented. Transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation. The electrodes stimulate the skin with electric current on the painful area. And this is a very famous device used in the esoteric scene, the singing bowls. Don't pay attention to what all the esoterics say, like moving waters in the cells, harmonization of the chakras, dissolving mental and physical blocks, and so on. But amazingly, it does work. It can ease pain, like the electrogenic fish, or like electric nerve stimulation, by activating the anti-pain system. Naturally, this does not describe the entire pain inhibiting system of our body. There are also nerve tracks um, from the brain down to the spinal cord and so on. However, I consider this sufficient for this lecture, and I won't go into further details. In my opinion, mostly these effects are responsible for the alleviation of symptoms, especially pain following acupuncture treatment. I come to the conclusion, sticking needles into the skin can ease pain because of unspecific reactions of the body. Release of endorphins can alleviate various systems. Needles penetrating the skin increase the local blood flow with possible positive effects on pain sensation and muscle tonus. And there's no evidence for specific points exclusively inducing these effects. So my next conclusion is doctors like acupuncture because every shot's a winner. That's what we can say about the good ones. Whenever you read something about pain therapy in the German layman's literature, you come across acupuncture. There is no clearly defined line as to whether it belongs to complementary methods or instead to regular medicines like injections, medications, um, or physical therapies. But do people really know details of acupuncture and acclaimed special effects? Do they know about chi, meridians, and magic points carrying extraordinary names, names like the three village point or the three miles point? Do they know about the five phases, wood, fire, metal, earth, water? Do they know about diseases caused by wind, heat, or dampness? The more you read, the more you get to the opinion that the system of acupuncture can, com can be compared with the Star Trek universe and its blueprints of the Starship Enterprise. Because everybody knows that with the shields up, the transporters won't work, and the depletion of the lithium crystals will definitely shut down the warp drive. And reading about quality management in acupuncture and certification of acupuncturists, all I can ask for is, beam me up, Scotty. There's no intelligent life down here. <laughs> Research needs questioning. Quality of answers depends on the quality of the questions. And therefore, my dearest acupuncturists, I have some questions for you. And to my knowledge, no study has evaluated the following ones. 
when does the she start slowing? That's the moment of conception. <laughs> when does it stop flowing? Brain death, cardiac arrest, and death. What about qi following amputations? Is there a permanent loss of qi at the location of the amputation? Is there any qi left in the amputated limb? The acupuncturists call it qi stagnation and suggest to use the points of the corresponding limb on the other side. But what about this case? Any idea of cooling heat or expelling wind once the specific points are not available anymore? I'm not making fun of these um, extremely handicapped people. Some of my patients have amputated limbs and as pain therapists I know how difficult it is to treat severe phantom pain. I know what these patients go through. I'm just annoyed about these stupid assumptions. Well, this one, what about its uh, flow during cardiopulmonary bypass when the heart-lung machine is working for cardiac surgery? Wouldn't you expect severe disharmony in the flow of qi during or following such interventions? Can it move in different velocities? Is there a main velocity? Does it flow constantly during sleep and awareness? In which direction does it flow? Can it, change? Uh, can it be changed? And, very interesting, does it flow in all creatures? What about qi in arms? What about qi in lice? Qi here? Okay. okay. Now you see what happens when a master of Sheng Fui, the one and only Lawrence Meyer, tries to liberate a chicken of salmonella infection. <laughs> and can the qi of two individuals interfere in special situations? <laughs> what do I mean by that? Of course not what you are thinking of. No, what happens if the chi of a mosquito penetrates an acupuncture point? <laughs> according to the system, according to the system, interference is possible. <laughs> Admittedly, that is a bit pedantic, but I really think I'm allowed to ask these questions. Acupuncturists want us to believe in chi. So it's time for them to provide some evidence. There are lots of questions to contemplate, and if we seriously discuss acupuncture, we must ask all these questions and find answers. Following the questions on qi, I have some more regarding the magic points. Just one example, the frequently used point called uh, dictam 4, large intestine 4, being the master point of pain. So it's my point, my personal point which is located here on the red spot. My only question is, what is found here, but not there? Which factor responsible for pain release, wind cold or wind heat syndromes, is located on the red spot, but not on the black spot? What makes only the red spot induce labor, tonify the chi, and remove stagnation, but not the black one? My dearest acupuncturists, after 4,000 years of mysticism, it's time to show us the difference. And I want to show some points you may have not encountered before. It's XKH10. I don't th think you like this one either. It's kidney one, which should clear heat, calm the Shen, tonify Jin, and also clear empty heat. Or this one, pericard one, can help you with a lot of problems because it opens the chest, regulates qi, and stops cough and benefits the breasts. Urinary bladder 67. Eliminates wind, clears the, heat, uh, clears the head and eyes, and turns the fetus. It is said to be a major point to help the child during labor. <laughs> yeah. Do my 28. But does this point really exist? In this book, the Dumai Meridian ends with point 26. What a pity. And XKH9, a recommended point in case of unconsciousness and other emergency situations. And I really believe, <laughs> and I really believe that if you try to stick a needle into this point, there are two possibilities. <laughs> First, the person really has lost consciousness and needs urgent medical assistance, or you get a good smacking. 
<laughs> Oops. What is this? <laughs> it's governing vessel one. Does anyone in the audience have problems with constipation or wants to have a wind expelled? <laughs> so if you don't want to believe in a system of arbitrariness, you can have a look at guidelines. In Germany, we have the Association of the Scientific Medical Societies, which is the head organization of more than 150 medical societies. And as you see here, there are 21 guidelines mentioning acupuncture, but none of them recommends its use. And that gives me cause for hope. Or the National Guideline for Lower Back Pain. It's not recommended. The guideline of the German Headache Society. It's not recommended. And the guideline treatment of pain after operations is also not recommended. According to lists published, acupuncture helps in almost all diseases. Therefore, you could ask your acupuncturist the following five questions. In case he's well trained and experienced, he must answer yes to all questions. The first one is, would you treat your child which is diagnosed with a lung uh, inflammation, pneumonia, only with needles? Would you refrain from vaccinating your child because you know use of acupuncture battles infectious diseases? Would you treat your wife's Parkinson's disease solely using needles? Or would you try to lower high pressure in your inner eye to prevent blindness only by use of acupuncture needles? What about, um, would you treat severe rhythm problems of your heartbeat, especially in the atrium, just with needles, or would you prefer to take recommended remedies? I don't know what his answer would be like, but I am convinced to know what he would do. Generally, he will not treat a severe illness exclusively with acupuncture, because he'd be afraid to do so. And within acupuncture, um, there are hundreds of different techniques, performances, and ways of treatment. As I said, a system of arbitrariness. And let me show you some of it. And let's start with the eye acupuncture by Professor Bull. This ultra new technique was invented by John Bull, especially for the blind and the visually impaired. You see, uh, he has treated more than 6,000 patients, um, also with incurable diseases with amazing results, and that it's possible to improve the sight of many patients um, with calcification of the eye. The next one, the new scalp acupuncture by Yamamoto. The new scalp acupuncture by Dr. Yamamoto was invented 1973 by Dr. Takayashu Yamamoto and he can feel special things. What have they got what I can't provide? Click <coughs> He was, it was discovered in 1970, and uh, it is helpful in chronic and acute pain problems. The next one, the NADA. It's um, the National Acupuncture Detoxic Doc Detoxification Association, which is a specialized discipline of acupuncture taking care of patients addicted to drugs or alcohol and psychic trauma. Naturally, you have to pay for all these trainings and certifications as well as for Dr. Yamamoto's theories. And this one is very interesting, the augmented acupuncture by Dr. Kovic. And it's especially dedicated to patients suffering from allergies. And interestingly, um, Dr. Kovic states clearly that this is, and this is really unique, his method does not work in some cases, like pregnant women, persons younger than 18, um, patients who are described cortisone medication and during menstruation. And he states explicitly that you don't have to pay in case the treatment does not work. And this is really unique. Next one, the DIT acupuncture. Here you see a patient suffering from painful arthrosis in both knees. DIT acupuncture helped. And what is it? It's a double insertion technique. And this is a contribution to the various acupuncture techniques from a doctor who works in a small town near the Dutch border. And he discovered, though, when making use of two needles, the flow of chi in this spot 
it's intensified. Okay, to be honest, I invented it. <laughs> and I'm very proud because it works. So, and so on. The message is create a special acupuncture technique, open your own acupuncture school, and with a professional marketing, you probably can become rich. That's I wanted to say about the bad ones. As I told you, I worked initially as anesthesiologist and then palliative care became um, the main focus of my work. And this is specialized medical care for people with serious illnesses, mostly cancer patients. And it is focused on providing patients with pain relief from the symptoms, from relief from symptoms like pain and stress of a serious illness. The, ob the objective is to improve quality of life for both the patient and the family. An important principle could be described with the words, you can add life to days even when you can't add days to life. However, this still implies that all patients who come to see me die within a period of a few weeks or months. And for this reason, I react extremely sensitive to unrealistic promises of treatment given to them. And this is one of it, healing cancer with acupuncture. I don't want to comment on that. And here's an offer to patients with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, the ALS. This fatal uh, disorder is characterized by rapidly progressive weakness of, and muscle atrophy, which leads to total paralysis, including the respiratory system, so that most of the patients die after two or three years of respiratory compromise. But now hear this, a Chinese formulation, <coughs> acupuncture for treating ALS with two wonderful case reports. And here you see one of my ALS patients. She was then unable to move a limp. She could be put into a wheelchair. She needed ventilatory assistance, meaning a machine had to support her breathing and she died shortly after this photo was taken. And regarding ALS, there is absolutely no serious report that indicates a reversal of symptoms. So if the diagnosis was correct, these case reports are disgusting lies and unfair promises of salvation, and that really pisses me off. I could show you a lot of more uh, unserious information, but I won't do so. What about the costs of acupuncture? Between 80 and 85% of the German population are members of the public health insurance. And they can get acupuncture for lower back pain and arthrosis of the knee with a maximum of 15 sessions once a year. And the qualified doctor, his fee is about 30, uh, th uh, 361 euros. And to make it clear, public health care in Germany provides no money on cannabis for cancer patients, which sometimes can be very helpful, but would pay 361 euros for acupuncture if the same patient would also suffer from lower back pain. Between 10 to 15 percent of the German population have got a private health insurance, and normally these companies pay acupuncture for more um, diseases, and they also pay non-medical uh, practitioners. No diseases are excluded and you can get a lot more than 15 sessions per year. And uh, the doctor is paid with about um, 47 euros, euros for each treatment. So how many euros are spent for acupuncture, acupuncture in Germany in general? I could only get valid data about this red area of Germany with 8 million inhabitants. I work in this area. Um, and it's about 45 million euros per year. And breaking it down on the entire German population, you probably come up to 500 million euros for acupuncture of the public health system, and this is a huge amount of money. So let's come to the end. Occam's razor, I think the most skeptics are well aware of his main items, and according to Occam's razor, it's highly unlikely that the undoubtable positive effects of acupuncture are caused by chi, meridians, or specific points. It's more likely 
that they are the product of endorphins, hyperemia, which means increasing local blood flow, the placebo effect, suggestion, remarkable coincidences and other unspecific effects caused by inserting needles into the body. And the first day of my training sessions um, on acupuncture, um, the lecturer told us that this, this would be a very hands-on training and if we were to listen well, we would be able to treat our first patient uh, with lower back pain um, and the practice on the following Monday. I can top this. And I have five tips uh, for you, uh, free of charge, uh, to perform an excellent acupuncture on your partner or your cat or your dog or even better someone who can't run away. <laughs> so, um, according to a study which was conducted here in Berlin, um, especially non-single women are very attracted for the procedure of acupuncture. So select a woman who lives in a partnership and talk to her patiently for at least 30 minutes. Do inquire seriously about everything that is on, of concern to her. Questions she has uh, mostly likely never been asked before. For example, do you take your meals in regular intervals or just when you're hungry? Do you prefer hot to cold meals? What's your favorite flavor, sweet, sour? Do you suffer from cold hands? Do you sleep well? Is your sleep interrupted? And consequently, she believes that your interest in her is ingenious and unique and that you are going the very best for her going to do the very best for her. And don't choose unattractive points like I've shown you. <laughs> um, and use near and far points uh, in a comparable ratio and don't use too many needles. That means you can't put only the needles where it hurts. You have to prove that you know all the different relations between inner organs, the flow of the chi and the spe special points that are located in a distance to the location of pain. Use a well-heated room with candlelight and before inserting the needle, take at least 15 seconds to locate the exact point. <laughs> and this process uh, to find the exact location um, is very important and you can use a very simple trick. So turn the needle around and press the head of it three or four times around the area of the point and ask her if she can feel different sensations and insert the needle in the very point where she feels a unique sensation and she will feel one. And in the end of the treatment, give your phone number and tell her she can give you a ring in case of side effects. Try to do so. I promise the procedure will be successful and tell me about it in the next Skeptic Conference. Hope to see you there again and may the chi be with you. <laughs> Katrien uh, Jong from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. I'm an anesthetist just like you, anesthesiologist, I should say. Um, recently, I don't know if you read uh, the magazine of the Dutch Association of Anesthetists. Not every Sunday. Okay. Um, there has been an article uh, about acupuncture in uh, the Dutch magazine for anesthetists. And at the end, the, the board of the Dutch Association of Anesthetists said that acupuncture does not belong to the work field of an anesthetist. They so, right. we've thrown it out. Uh, it is right. It is uh, a method which, which, which can help in certain situations, but um, it has nothing to do with the field um, of an anesthesiologist. That's right. Well, that, that includes pain therapy. Pain therapy is part of the anesthesia work field. In the Netherlands. Yes, um, that's also right. Um, <laughs> but you can't do anything against it. Um, acupuncture is um, well settled in the German medicine, and every course of um, and every every, every, treat, um, every um, training session about uh, qualifying in this area will include acupuncture. Or they will ask, "Do you also um, can um, um, acupuncture me?" Um, I've got another question. If you put an acupuncture needle in and it hurts, 
um, I've heard you have to have uh, uh, needles that are uh, a bit uh, rough so that you actually can induce pain with your no, acupuncture needle. That's not needle. pain. That's the DG sensation. <laughs> that's, oh, that's not pain. That's a very specific um, effect you only can induce in the special points. Yes, uh, <laughs> but the end point is you induce pain about. and you induce endorphins that work yes. for 10 to yes. 20 minutes. Yes. So is that effective pain treatment? Yes, um, um, it will better the symptoms. And um, a lot of acupuncturists um, recommend um, after 10 minutes of uh, treatment, you go again to the patient and take the needles and stick them in and out um, because this improves um, the release of endorphins yeah. or uh, will stimulate the anti-pain system, which is mu much more um, complicated than I showed you. But um, And the other thing is, how do you distinguish the effect the needles have from the um, uh, effect the treatment ritual itself has? The treatment ritual itself has an effect yeah. And how do you distinguish uh, any more effect that comes from the needles? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. May I su suggest something? Uh, there have been many studies with sham acupuncture yeah. mm. that I, in the Heidelberg University they did like theater uh, swords or daggers, but with acupuncture needles, just seemed to penetrate, mm. and then there was this international study where they uh, used wooden toothpicks, and it works just as mm. well as real needles. You can also use cigarettes or... Uh, <laughs> um, that's, that's the point. I, um, I don't want to make a lecture about studies uh, which are conducted. It's like the homeopath, every year a new one. Um, if you think that acupuncture is more than these unspecific effects, you have to prove chi, meridians, and magic points. And this is required. And not, again, any other study which, uh, which uh, leads to a good um, effect, uh, which can be explained. Um, I have a question uh, regarding you, your information of your patients. Um, I suppose you, to, you tell your patients in advance that you don't believe in all those mumbo-jumbo we are mocking about in this uh, conference, but how do you see the danger that a patient goes home feeling better and afterwards is informing himself on the internet or with the friends and uh, believes that all the acupuncture system, all the beliefs in chi is helping him and not, not just the uh, pain system and the uh, um, well scientific based uh, system? So aren't you uh, being part of all the um, system which um, causes the mumbo jumbo never to stop? Yes, and therefore I stopped doing this. I have, um, at the moment, the last patient uh, who came to me with the uh, wish to get acupuncture. Um, and then I told my... What's um, Helferin? Um, Mitarbeiterin? Uh, the systems not to buy any f uh, further needles. So I'm depleted of needles and I can't do it anymore. Now, a question to this wing of the auditorium. James, please. Uh, some years ago, I was uh, privileged to visit China, and the Chinese government decided they had to prove acupuncture to me because I was so doubtful. They uh, sent me into an acupuncture clinic there, which had two gentlemen who had been educated at MIT in the United States and spoke perfect English, were a little embarrassed in my presence, but uh, they explained it to me. And one of the points they made to me was that there were 365 acupuncture points on the body. I found this an amazing coincidence. This was the same number of days in a year. <laughs> However, I was so bold as to ask them, what happened on leap years? <laughs> and they told me that they were closed on <laughs> leap year days. Uh, the other point I wanted to make was, uh, well, it's a simple question, and perhaps you would know, sir, is there an acupuncture point for stupidity? <laughs> uh, 
Hello. Um, my question it may be slightly off topic, but um, you mentioned um, health insurance, and I was wondering, uh, do you know of a private health insurance company that's actually skeptical and therefore cheaper because nope. they don't they don't give the money to this? No, um, that's not so, and it was very difficult to get um, uh, data on the money which is spent. Um, I sent mails to the um, head organization of the private insurance companies in Germany and they said we can't um, um, figure it out. And um, I only got the information about my area where I work in um, um, and um, the General Medical Council does not provide this, um, this amount of money. I don't know what's happening there but um, I think 500 million euros only for the um, public health care uh, insurances is, um, is a good amount. And then you have to think of that what the private uh, insurance companies um, um, are willing to pay. Um, I guess it's the same amount again, but it's only a guess. Uh, I took a question I always wanted to ask to an acupuncture expert. You know, perhaps the joke about the, the fool who hurts himself with a hammer and we're asking why he does this, he says, oh, it's, it feels so good when you stop with it. Yeah. So could, <laughs> could you, uh, basing on that interesting uh, principle, could you now we not create a hammer therapy quite similar to acupuncture? Um, <laughs> Introduce it in the next skeptical conference, for example. <laughs> Could I add uh, one more tip to your list of things to tell your patient? Some alternative practitioners tell their patients that after this treatment, their symptoms might get a little worse before they get better. Yes. So if the symptoms get worse, the treatment is working. If the symptoms stay the same, then the treatment is counterbalancing the, effect, the adverse effects of the, that it might have. And if the treatment and if the symptoms get better, then obviously the treatment is working. Yes. So you can't lose with that. Thank you. Uh, there's a question there. Yeah. Uh I, I recently tried to find a doctor, um, an orthopedic, special kind of doctor who <laughs> in Special Bandung kind of doctor, yes. And uh, tried to find someone who doesn't have chiropractic or acupuncture on their website, and I couldn't find yes. one. Do you have any idea how I could find one? Is there a list? <laughs> <laughs> you ask questions, I don't know. <laughs> um, I have no idea. And I think you will not find many of them because um, I really like the orthopedic colleagues. I don't want to say anything negative about them, but they all offer acupuncture and um, manual medicine and chiropractic. You can't, I think you can't run a practice in Germany without offering these uh, um, additional qualifications. Yes, in my experience, when I ask an acupuncturist or somebody who believes in it, how is it that we have never discovered meridians or, or acupuncture points uh, you know, experimentally? And the answer is always, well, your instruments are not precise enough. Yes. Science has not evolved enough to see these meridians. So how do you counter that? <laughs> what do I say to that? That's the same stupid argument you always hear from the homeopath. Um, that this method is so um, undoubtable, um, 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 you, I think you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that we, we creatures on earth can't um, discover it and um, that's always the same argument and they have to prove it and it would be possible. They have to take um, uh, surgeons and, and go over these uh, 365 and sometimes there's 700 and uh, sometimes 1,000 points and uh, to look at them and to look up what's, uh, what are the structures um, specific to this. And um, I could imagine studies to prove um, a special effect on acupuncture. Um, for example, with um, animals 
and um, with 2,000 uh, cows um, in the one group and 2,000 cows on the other group. And, um, but that should rec require that the um, head organizations of the acupunctures um, uh, stick together and sort out where are the meridians and where are the points. And if this um, would be possible, they could conduct a study, but they won't do so. Yes, and of course it's much, very much more difficult than that. You have the Chinese points and then have the Korean points, which are different, and then have the Japanese points. I think we should uh, make a skeptic price available to find the point of the body that is not an acupuncture point. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Uh, a white question there. I would like to know if you have any proof that women in partnerships are more likely to believe in acupuncture. Uh, this is a, a study which is um, conducted here in Berlin by Professor Witt. Um, she has um, uh, she teaches con complementary um, medicine here in Berlin, and this was one of. Um, the issues um, and one of the um, uh, things you could prove. So if you look, I can give you the study, um, but it's one of the um, results. And uh, any ideas why women in partnerships? No. <laughs> I just have a very short remark. It's um, something that must not be overlooked is uh, look for the money. Because it's, um, as you say, orthopedists, they do not believe, most of them do not believe in acupuncture. They just have to do it because they have to deal with their patients and they have to find something to write down and get refurbished for. And if, um, because you simply don't get paid for 30 minutes talking. Not adequately though. And it's, <coughs> it's just in, 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 a, in a, it's just we have an overblown health, healthcare system and I don't think in a country like Afghanistan, I don't think um, complementary medicine is much of an issue. Just we, we can afford it, and we do afford it, and we should think about putting stops to the fact that we do afford this. Well, I just wanted to comment uh, on one thing Dr. Hall said or about studies never published. I remember that when I was in training in medical school, um, we had a very good uh, physiology department, neurophysiology department, that did a lot of research. They got a Chinese professor in to explain uh, uh, acupuncture and to see what could be studied. Um, we have been able to study the electric uh, uh, current, uh, not current, but electricity in one living cell. We can measure that. We can measure. We have been able to do so for over 40 years. We can measure uh, the current going along one nerve, uh, and we have been able to do so for over 40 years. So how can they say that our measurements are not sensitive enough? Uh, and the other thing is, I think a lot of uh, physiology departments had acupuncturists coming from China and doing the basic research and nothing was coming out and a lot of the negative research has not been published. But I think we've searched long enough for meridians and acupuncture points. I think my homeopathic friends would say, that is definite proof there is something wrong with allopathic science. Now, we had two wonderful speakers uh, in this session. Thank you very much again, and we go to lunch. The World Skeptics Congress, Paranormal, Supernatural, Fringe Science, Pseudoscience, and How It Really Is. We're skeptics.